Gaga's on the go, 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 go. It's a little chilly. Um, so everybody, there's in fact a tornado warning. It's getting ah! really windy. Go, 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 go. Hi, my name is Sophia Caliero. And I'm a performer with the Tamburitsons, a folk performance ensemble based in Pittsburgh made up of 27 college students. We travel the country and perform a two-hour show celebrating cultures from around the world. Goggles on the Go, as you see here, is a silly little video blog I made to document my travels with the ensemble. And uh, we travel a lot. <laughs> I've been involved in this style of performance since I was a kid, and I'm lucky to have the opportunity to continue in the Tamburitsons. This year, I was asked to make videos that will play before each region featured in the show. Profiles about performers and choreographers to show the learning process, but also a little bit about the region that we get to perform. I also want to share with you what it's like as a Tamburitson, setting up the stage, traveling on our bus, our rehearsals, but first, I will share with you one of my favorite videos. This is my friend Ira from Ukraine. She was the first person I worked with to create one of these profile videos for our show. And uh, now I'd like to share it with you. Vibrant. Elegant. Glorious. Strong members from the audience came to me and said that when they saw Ukrainian dance, they felt like they were home. So I danced because I started early on when I was three years old, and since then it became the most important part of my life. I got into Ukrainian dancing when I was about three years old and fell in love with it, and still doing it to this day. Through dancing I can preserve my culture. Your culture defines who you are. Ukrainian set has a really colorful costume pieces. It's rich in history. And it's a very celebratory dance. The dance is from Poltava region. It's in central Ukraine. And when the audience sees this dance, they can see many tricks from male dancers. To show the strength and you know their happiness of victory after a successful battle. And how they defended our land. We're also just supposed to support them and show the elegance. It just represents Ukraine in the most powerful way. This Ukrainian set will begin with instrumental melody by Miroslav Skorik, frequently described as a spiritual hymn of Ukraine, and ending with the traditional dance of Ukraine, Hopak. This dance means a lot to me. Every time I dance it, it just feels like it's my home and it matters everything to me. Can you tell me to go? Yeah, go. So, Tammy started in 1937 by Dr. A. Lester Pierce in Texas. We started as a smaller group of musicians, and it was also only guys. And after the group moved to Pittsburgh, it became more of a variety show featuring dancers, and it became a co-ed ensemble. The Tamburitsons have performed all across the United States and Europe as well. Currently, in our 87th season, we're still performing as much as we can on the road. Since Dr. Pierce created the group, it has gone through many different leaderships, but the mission is still the same, to preserve cultures through music, song, and dance. Shortly after they moved to Pittsburgh, Tammy's began a summer training camp in Lake Nebagam in Wisconsin to learn the entirety of the show. The Tamburitsons were training at Lake Nebagaman uh, up until 86, 87. So at that point, we started training at universities closer to Pittsburgh. Now, on our first tour of the season, we get to visit Lake Nebagaman and perform shows on the very same stage where so many Tammies have before. And we also get to carry on the same traditions. One of them is throwing the freshmen in the lake, baptizing them so they're officially a Tamburitson.
this set is non-stopping. There's just a lot of exciting movement that also has some skill in them. I grew up doing Slovak dancing and I started when I was three years old. I'm extremely excited to be bringing the Slovak set to the stage this year. There's so much energy, it's a very high energy dance, it's very playful, it kind of represents everything that we stand for. This is specific to the eastern region. Slovakia being a small country, it still actually has quite a diversity. Slovakia through the history has been influenced by other cultures. So there are a lot of variety there. There's a lot of couples dancing featured, however, there are also sections where there's uh, just women dancing and you see the girls karička, which is the circles dance. There's a lot of movement in this dance. Your eyes are constantly figuring out what to watch. It adds to the experience for the audience. It's pretty common for the girls to be wearing such colorful costumes like this. That's one of the elements to bringing the youth of the girls, the personality. The guys have spurs and uh, a lot of their steps have chapash, which would be the slapping combination. The set begins with an instrumental on the piccolo. Um, after that, I come in and join with a vocal piece. After that, the men come in, join with a very fun, lively song and a traditional hat dance that they then bring out their spoons for. And lastly, whenever the women come in, this is kind of the entire culmination of the piece where we have the men and women dancing together and there's the most energy, there's the most fun and interaction between the two and it kind of closes out the whole set in a perfect way. I think I feel very proud. I feel that I stand a little taller, um, my smile's a little brighter, I have a little bit more energy knowing that I'm doing something that my family would be very proud of. Goku's on a go, go, go. Goku's on a go. Hey guys, advanced crew. Hi everyone, Hi. welcome to Ligonier. Okay, so we have a 3 p.m. show today. Everyone get very excited. We get there four hours early every show. The people that unload the bus take all the trunks off and then we carry them in and then we all start doing our jobs. Sometimes it takes a little longer because we have to adjust to different show sites. Sometimes they're a lot smaller than others, or sometimes they're even a lot bigger, and that even takes some time. Are you coming to our show? Yes, I am. I can't wait to get there, huh? The thing that makes our setup a little bit different is that we don't have a stage crew traveling with us, so it falls on us and the very few staff members we do keep on the road with us to like put everything together for the show. So it's all spread out pretty evenly. There's people on wardrobe, there's people on like stage setup, there's people on technology. I tune all the instruments before the show. And it takes like maybe two hours to set up everything on stage and then the rest of the time is ironing, steaming costumes and getting yourself ready, maybe stretching for the dancers or going over music for musicians to uh, get ready for the show. We also have to collect and prepare all of our extras, and there's a lot as you can see. Extras are anything from shoes to hats to something as little as a feather or an earring. Every single piece matters. Be like, would you tell me what you're doing? Ironing. You're not, you're steaming. <laughs> I'm steaming. <laughs> steaming. Four hours may seem like plenty of time, but you'd be surprised how fast this stressful time goes by. But before you know it, all of the costume pieces, extras, and instruments are laid out and show ready. And then we try to shake out some of the nerves while we wait anxiously backstage for the show to begin. <laughs> Pennsylvania. 
lot of rhythmical stuff, a lot of spinning, you can see the skirts uh, flowing, and a lot of cool stamping, and you will be able to hear some good, um, you know, interesting syncopations and, and, and rhythms. <laughs> I grew up in Hungary and I started dancing in a children's folk dance group back in Hungary and uh, I brought that with me here to the United States. The set from this year, it's uh, from a region called uh, Szilágyság. Just like with any hu Hungarian dancing, there's usually a men's dance or men's dances and uh, couples dancing. You know, it's all about uh, displaying virtuosity uh, rhythm, slapping, manliness. When you look at uh, Southern Slavic Balkan folk dances, they are line dancing. It's a more ancient form of dancing. You pretty much need to follow the line. There is not a whole lot of room for improvisation, whereas in Hungarian dancing, that's really the, um, the main form of dancing. You know, I'm still learning. It's uh, really a never-ending process, but I'm really happy to uh, impart my learning, my knowledge, and you know the skill set to the next generation of dancers. Living on the bus is a interesting experience. It's not that spacious, but you just gotta make do with what you have. But there are a room on each side of the suite, Ooh. each with a king bed. Yes! <laughs> When we're going to a show, sometimes to pass the time, people are sleeping, coloring, coloring like I am. Sometimes if we're late for a show, people are doing their hair and makeup on the bus, talking to each other, catching up, playing games. People do homework. The girls sing a lot together. The boys don't like it as much. Each seat has their own bus pouch that we can keep personal items in. Headphones, a little stuffed animal, chargers, maybe some snacks. But most of the stuff in our bus pouch is pretty random. Shout out to Italy. Is this the right way? Spending so much time on the bus definitely brings out our true colors, but it's also where we bond the most. And on our overnight trips and tours, it's pretty fun because we get to have one giant sleepover. So it ends up being two people on the seat and two people on the floor. The one that goes on the floor has a mat and a blanket and they go and they lay across. So this is the bus board that we use to sleep if you're a seat sleeper. Um, we actually got new ones made so this year, so they're actually comfy and cushiony and not broken. I'm on the floor. I don't know how many people And then the you curl up for the night. There's a level of like adaptability that you have to have. Half the time I don't even know what's going on. Like I just get off the bus and move from there. Wait, where are we? We're in Ford City. Um, it's an outdoor show. Funny story though, it's raining and the stage is outside, so the stage is wet. So, who knows if we're having a show today? We have to get used to adjusting quickly to different stages and different variables at each show site, and each one is very different. But there's a joy with each challenge. Luckily, we have a small team that travels with us on the road. They help run the lights and the sound during the show, as well as drive the bus. For most shows, we have dads that come with us on the bus. Uh, they're a lot of fun to be around. We rely on them for light and sound, which is very helpful. They help us with any technical difficulties that we have setting up the show. See all these wires, how they're broken? I don't even know how it worked yesterday. I gotta fix them all. 
So I'm tagging these faders, the existing lights that they have for the house. Oh, I'm just playing around with lights via. So, oh. Trying to get these aimed properly. Do I have a serious enough face? Um, maybe a little bit more serious. Looks like he has gas. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do a show. These guys become our on-the-road dads, and they definitely have to handle a lot more than what they sign up for. Once you get to the DMX channel, um, Him all jump to their feet. <laughs> they always shine with a positive attitude and provide good laughs. We got pretty lucky having them around. I think it's important to not limit yourself to only the cultures you represent. It's important to broaden your musical palette. You have to put yourself in the shoes of an Armenian musician and try to absorb as much of the traditions and style and technique of that music genre as you can. My mom started putting me in Mexican dance. Uh, I did Chinese dancing, Irish dancing, Latin American dancing. And I would first start playing colo on piano and then I saved up some money and I got my first accordion. I've been playing percussion since about third grade so I took lessons for about 10 years. By incorporating different techniques and what you've learned uh, throughout the years from different cultures can make you feel more confident in what you're doing. I've become more adaptable to learn different styles. Technique that I already know will help because Armenian music isn't, you know, crazy with these staccato notes and all that. It's, you have to feel it more. It's not just a straight rhythm. There's a little bit of variation in it the whole time. It's a lot of emotions. They have their own scales, their own sort of traditions involved in music heavily. In Armenian dancing, the women are very fluid with their movements. Their arms are as if they're an extension of them. Their feet are usually dancing to the beat of the drum while their head is following their hands. The drum is called a dole. That is the main percussion instrument from Armenian folk music. Not like the main beat, it's almost like it's its own melodic instrument in a way. Although our heritage isn't Armenian, we embrace and reflect our culture through beautiful, distinctive melodies and delicate, yet powerful dances. So during the week, we have school. We all attend different universities um, around Pittsburgh. And then on Fridays is when we have rehearsal. So we rehearse from five to nine. But usually we do run-throughs if we have a show that weekend, like this weekend. Rehearsals are led by our artistic director, George Kresovich, but we all call him Butchie. Butchie was a Tammy himself and he worked in the showbiz industry for a long time. Now, for the past eight years, he's been creating our show, a tedious and time-consuming project, doing everything from arranging music to deciding which headpiece we should wear. Every single thing heard or seen on stage is planned by Butch. Especially as the year goes on, I feel like we all look forward to going to rehearsal on Friday because it's just, it's like one big family. No, this was perfect. And we don't have to worry about school in those moments that we're rehearsing and talking to each other. Usually we unload the bus from the show before, so if that's the case, we have to pack all our costumes up again. Sometimes they get washed. So we put those back in order with our trunk partner, close everything up, make sure we have everything, double check. So besides running the show and cleaning things up, we also get the time to catch up with each other, talk about how our week went, um, plan future get-togethers, because <laughs> when we don't have a show, we're usually all hanging out.
Spending so much time with these people has made me realize just how talented each individual is. And how lucky I am to share this experience of bringing the show to life and having a blast doing it. Family is everything and can be considered the most important aspect to a Croatian's life. With a rich history, stunning natural beauty, and vibrant culture, Croatia is known for its beautiful coastal cities and islands. Music and dance play a big role in Croatian culture. Maddie, do you like performing Croatian more than the other sets? I do. But I feel like I'm also biased because I am Croatian. It means a lot to me because of the family I still have in Croatia. It's really emotional in a way. You're celebrating not just your culture, but you're celebrating your family's sacrifice to leave all that behind. During a set that it's where you're from, it definitely makes you think about your grandparents and your cultures that, that you all share. I think it helps me gain a deeper appreciation for my culture, as well as making me feel closer to my family that was in the group. It's something you share with all your family members and that they have shared and they've made experiences and it's something very cool to tell other people that you do. And it's an experience that I'll probably never forget. The segment will begin with an a cappella song, Prekčez Drove, across the river of Drava arranged by Božo Potočnik, then move into a traditional dance from the Podravina region and end with a klapa vocal number. Men's klapa, originating out of Dalmatia, Croatia, means a group of friends. Men's klapa is a form of a cappella singing with themes tending to be around love, wine, country, and the sea. I'm grateful to have this opportunity to keep my culture alive by performing songs and dances from Croatia alongside my friends who share my same heritage. Talk and sing. Sing what you were just singing. The chorus. Jump! Talk is on the go, 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 go! Living with those people, traveling with those people, seeing them like at their best and definitely also at their worst. And like with Tammy's, it's actually like a huge portion of your college life. So I, I don't know if it makes it better or worse. I love them. We're all so close. We honestly don't act like friends. We act like siblings. We spend holidays together. Not everyone's from Pittsburgh. So Tammy's becomes their Pittsburgh family. You're just on the road with everybody so much, it like becomes a family. So that, Emma, you need to focus. We are by ourselves. Put your phone down. Use your eyes. I'm really scared, Emma. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful to have this experience and to be able to share a glimpse of it with you. It's sad to think that soon my time as a tambourine will end, but I'm happy I will have all of these videos to look back on and friends that will last a lifetime. I never thought my college experience would be full of adventure. I get to travel the country every weekend with my best friends, meet new people and see new cities. How could life be any sweeter?
<laughs> that was honestly the best I've heard so far. <laughs> See, you guys thought we were driving the bus while you were sleeping. Oh, okay, bye-bye, Gaga.